Wednesday night. That means it's time for FlexCast. I'm Dina Hall, and uh, that's what we're going to do here tonight. We are Flex Adapt with Intent, Contemplating Performing Arts and Visual Arts During Uncertain Times. And uh, just had to make a couple of adjustments to make sure that this was going out properly. Um, it says that it is going out over... Um, over Facebook and YouTube as well. So if anyone uh, happens to not see it on any of those spots, either of those spots, let me know and I will make sure that uh, we uh, get that corrected. This is technology that we're all learning as we go along and um, you're gonna find out a little bit about that tonight. We're gonna bring in two very, very dear friends, Catherine Rondo, oh, no. Lily Aniel. Hi. Ah, and hey. there you go. There are the two ladies up there at the top. Um, look at that. I can move you all around. We can just keep, <laughs> keep, keep straight in places. Shaking all over. Nice to see you both here to tonight. Uh, we're all in the same time zone. That's really helpful. Um, and uh, Lily, you're in Philadelphia. Yep. Catherine, where are you? I'm in Burlington, New Jersey, which is kind of in the middle. Yes. Kind of in the middle. Yeah. I live in central Jersey. Central Jersey. Oh, you mean the middle of Jersey. Yeah. Yes. I, I was thinking between, I'm in, I'm in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. So I was going to say, that's not the yeah, middle, but okay. Middle. No, no, <laughs> we're, we're thinking things that we're not saying. Okay. So that's wonderful. Um, And you both uh, know each other for how many years, would you say? It's been a while now. Just a handful, yeah. Maybe three. Maybe three, so? three, yeah. three, maybe four. That's great. Yeah. I think... Um, when we when I come together with people and bring them on here, we we just do this a little exploration in the beginning of, you know, what's the what's the history? How did we all come together? And um, I'm very curious to hear about how it is you you met. Um, somebody tell me tell me all about it. Well, I I know um I met Catherine through Lizanne. Not we did a show or you know, an in the round type show. And it was going to feature three women. And she wanted me, she asked me if I'd be part of it and told me about Catherine. And so I, I looked up Catherine and listened to her music. And I said, wow, this, she's amazing. Oh. And so I think it made for a great show. And that's how we met. And we've done about, what, two, three shows now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's gone really, really well. And we get yeah, on, was, on, on, we get on well, I think anyway. Yeah. And yeah, that's how I met. Good. And I think Catherine's an amazing talent. She, and, and I'm going to say this now on record. Um, and I told her this the other day, the other night, she reminds me of Odetta. I knew Odetta. Oh, and uh, yes, she has that same vibe. It's not just that she has a big voice because I have a big voice, but I don't remind mm -hmm. people of Odetta. So she just has that, her, her, her message in her songs mm -hmm. and how she comes across mm -hmm. to the audience. Reminds me of that. And that's a cool thing. And it makes, gives me a great deal of comfort. Very it cool. It gives me goosebumps up my back and neck, to be honest. Um, when I did uh, when I did my first real record in 2016, I wanted to do an Odetta song. Uh, oh, wow. Because I, you know, just that I always admire, admired and respected her so much. And um, so I recorded both. Um, a song she wrote herself um, wow. called uh, Gotta Be Me. And also when I was kind of trying to find stuff to of hers to do, I came across the album Odetta uh, Sings Dylan from 1965. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Great I can tell you, I had never heard that album before. And I had never heard some of those Dylan songs before. Um, so I actually have two Odetta songs on, on that record. Because I also have, um, she covered a song that Dylan did called Long Ago, Far Away that mm -hmm. Dylan himself never recorded. And when I heard her sing it, I mean, I, anyway, so you can't imagine the compliment, moi, um, that that meant to me because because of that. And also, I'll, I'll tell on Lily what I was telling her the other day. The problem with doing an in the round show with Lily is not for the audience. They are going to be like, wow. Uh, the problem is for me because half of her songs make me cry with and They fill me with such emotion between her writing and her voice, which as someone with a powerful voice, when you f meet that soul sister of, oh, oh uh, 
oh, so between the two of them, and I'm trying to remember the words to my song, like I'm up next and I'm like, I'm crying with what you sang. And so <laughs> we put on a good show, I will say that. And we, we laugh a lot too, so that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. You had something that was supposed to be happening not long ago, right? It was canceled? December. Uh, well, we were I supposed mean, to do another in the round. Another, yeah. Another one at the Jamie's House of Music. Uh -huh. Just got canceled last week in the round. I had a show I was doing with uh, Dale Melton and David Mowry yeah. at the living room. They were doing an outside thing that was doing splendidly. Everybody was socially distant. It was my first outside. I was looking forward to it. It's supposed to be this Saturday. Last week got canceled. Yeah. Really? Yep. Yeah. See, these are the surprises, and these are the reasons why we have such a hard time making making plans and making decisions on any of it. Yeah. Um, do either of you f uh, find yourselves, have you found yourselves in, in a touring situation, or are you kind of staying more localized? Uh, How do you the, mean? Like right now, nobody's the, touring. No, no. In the last few years, because that's what that's a that's what's oh. happened is that nobody's nobody's touring. So how do we? Well, Dina, um, to your point, I think um, when we look back at 2019, mm -hmm. Lily and I both had phenomenal 2019s. Yeah. And oh, Barbara just put in a chat <laughs> that she cries when she, she hears oh, you sing Lord. too. Yeah. Barbara, mwah, I'm with you. Um, so I think for 2019, both Lily and I were doing some great touring. I mean, I was up, I mean, I had some, was really booking nice shows. I was doing some things in New England. Yeah. I had done a couple of things in Chicago. Um, and I had, so I was doing touring and I had dates all this year, Asheville, Northern New York, Chicago again, you know, yeah, so so that 2019, and I know Lily, you had some great shows. Um, well, I had a lot of stuff that was booked for 2020 that yeah. just went. Yeah, yeah. Um, my last gig was February 2020 in New York, and I had him. I'm from New York. I hadn't played in New York uh, about three years. We sold out two two shows, yeah. and at a club that had just been reopened, that was a famous, well known jazz club called Cafe Bohemia. So it was an honor to be part of, to play there, but it, everything went, everything went. Yeah. Uh, so that momentum, every, you know, yeah, that just, we had, we were really, you know, sometimes, you know, you have a record come out and, you know, things happen and, and, and you feel it and you get the calls and you get the booking. Yeah. So to have that. Come to a know, screeching halt. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I so, mean, my it's also like my CD was out in October. So it never really, it started to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it never really like got a chance to yeah, catch yeah. speed. It, I could technically say whenever this thing, you know, straightens out in the pandemic, I could say it's a new record. I, would I know a lot really. of people who have that be, because it, uh, uh, you know, I was fortunate I was getting airplay um, in Philadelphia and started to get airplay across the country on the different stations. But just when things were starting to move, I was getting great reviews. Yeah. Uh, everything just, it killed. It was just like, oh. So so let's let's just talk about the irony of the title of that, that record called Better Days. Yeah. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, it's funny. Um <gasps> I would have never thought when I wrote that song and when we put out that record last yeah. October, came out, was released October 4th, that that song, which is about someone who's thinking about their life and realizing and saying, I know somewhere there are better days, better days are going to happen, mm -hmm. that we would be all thinking that that, that was yeah. coming, that something yeah. was going to happen where we were going to look forward to better days. That's intense. I mean, yes. it's prescient, you know, I, I yes. who knew, uh, and it, I, I named it that, and I co-wrote that song with my sister, and it was a discussion we had, our grandfather, who was a wonderful man, and, and the absolute best real mo male role model that we had growing up, when times were tough, because growing up where we did, times were tough, I grew up in, born in Harlem, raised in the South Bronx, extended family, the whole bit, uh, when times are tough, he'd always look at us and say, better days will come. Tomorrow mm -hmm. is another day. Better days mm -hmm. will come. 
And I, I, I always believed him, but I, there were times I wanted to say, how do you know? How do you know it's going to, and he would say it's, it's, and he was right. Mm -hmm. And I always in my heart, even till now as an adult held on to that and rewrote this song. And then now look, so we're hoping for better days. So you have to hope, hope for better days. Absolutely. Uh, when did you start um, production on that album? On better days? Yeah. Well, here's the interesting thing. I think I started, so that was released. That was 2019? Yeah, 2019. I signed with an independent label in October of 2018. So the record was already almost finished. And... I said, we're going to finish it. And then he said, okay, we'll release it. So that, that was delayed, of course, a little bit because you signed a contract and the whole bit. The first time we started working on the CD was twenty, the end of 2017. I scrapped the whole record. We started. And I it sometimes you're, you're all writers, so you know this. You write a song and you hear it in your head so it lives with you and you know what you think you know what you want. Mm -hmm. You go into the studio with musicians throw it all together and it just didn't feel right yeah it didn't feel right it didn't feel right it didn't feel i didn't know why so i said let's you've heard the songs for a little while now let's start over so at the beginning it was 2017 i think it was 2018 yeah at the beginning of 2018 we got in and redid the whole thing we were almost done the end of 2018 going into 2019, we were almost done, and then all of a sudden, signed this contract, and there you have it. But uh, yeah, I, that was a hard one. That's a hard thing to do to say. No, we're starting over. I'll yeah. say. So Sometimes how... it's it's necessary. You have to be able to look at your work, be really real objective. Although we yeah. we're I'm sure we're all real hard on ourselves well, with yeah. music, and we think something stinks, and it's actually quite good. But uh, mm -hmm. um, it, so it that might... that's how long it's. Well, I guess about a couple of year and a half. Couple yeah. years. And and so so you say that was essentially released in October. October fourth, yep, twenty nineteen. All right. And, and to your point, Lily, about about airplay, I treat I would treat it as a new record because I know at least in a folk little folky mm -hmm. world, you know, a yeah. lot of our stations are, you know, a show within a there's a whole week's worth of stuff and there's a two hour show. A lot of them are related are in colleges. We right. had so many stations that closed and that okay. wouldn't let people even do broadcasting from home. I, just now I'm seeing more of my DJ friends from around the country saying, really? I finally got back in the studio. I finally, wow, um, really? yes, yes. So for some, for some stations, they have not been, they That's have right, not been broadcasting. The schools were closed. That makes perfect exactly. sense. Wow. Yeah. So much of that. So, so, so also, Catherine, I mean, unfortunate point of view. I mean, you know, we, we've got a whole lot of foreshadowing going on here <laughs> in these in these things. But it, but maybe that's just who we are. And it's a sign of ma our maturity and our personalities and the way we view the world. I'm not I'm not sure. So when was that um, that when was that released? So that was released January of 2019. Um, so I kind of get out the gate got out the gate i i i probably hmm, i was watching a a documentary where about bruce springsteen and him writing that the river album which ended up being a double album and he went in the studio and i think he had like 55 songs and then he recorded like 40 of them and then he, i i'm not that prolific so when I have enough songs for a record, I'm like, let's make a record. But, you know, songs that I really like. I'm like, I got, you know. And I also do cover material in uh, in my, on my releases. So I want to say that I probably started recording it in April of 2018. Um, and, yeah, April. April. And uh, had it released out for January. And... Uh, I love recording. I mean, it's it's fun. It is. Uh, until Lily's point, I have to I have to piggyback on something that she said. I have a song that was recorded uh, with Joe Jenks, uh, formerly with the Trio Brothers' son, and he's got a big, you know, folk voice and you know the big folk hair. And um, I didn't put it on the record. I have another. I have other stuff with him doing harmonies, 
And he said, why didn't you put that one on the record? It was so beautiful. I said, well, your part was so beautiful. But he has really almost like an operatic, you know, baritone voice. And I was doing um, a beautiful treatment of a, a traditional song called John Riley that Odetta recorded. Mm -hmm. And uh, his voice was so strong. And I, I could not get to where I wanted to be with my voice for that song. Mm -hmm. And every time I went in to try to record my vocal part, I just felt bad. And I said, I don't want anything where I'm feeling negative or bad. You know, I said, I'm going to put it on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm feeling good, you know, that can be on something in the future. Absolutely. So I already have one in the can. I just have to sing it better. Um, but uh, it was definitely, t you know, there's sometimes you go in there and you just know that one, it's just not, it's not ready. It's not, it's, it's just not sounding how I want it to. So I'll move on to the next one. It's good to be able to say that, to have that realization. Um, yeah. If I might say, I just found out some information today. My CD, Better Days, uh, it got into the first round of the Grammy nominations. I don't put a lot of stock in it. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm proud of the work. So uh, best R and B album. It's incredible. And the song "Take It From Me," best traditional R and B vocal. Ah, yes. So I'm like, oh, for you. What? Yes. I, <laughs> like I said, you know, it's it's we all know what the deal is with all that stuff. But, yeah. Sure. And um, but, but still, I'm proud of of the very proud of the work. So I said it. Mm. There you go. Mm, no, that's what, that's what we're here for. But we're trying to find a shining light in all of this. Yeah, you know, it's got to it's got to be out there, and and all of our truly hard work. I mean, yes. we, have to, we have to acknowledge um, these things. You all know Tina. Tina Pastor is watching as well. Yep. Yes, little Tina. And that big Tina. dog curve. Congratulations. She takes photographs. She does. It's She's a, a big wonderful, dog. wonderful, wonderful supporter. And she's probably tunes into almost every one of these. I'm really appreciative. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so you know, we, everything everything came to a halt. And um, what you know, what just I know, Catherine, you've been knitting. Uh, <laughs> why don't you show us uh, what you got going on there? Oh, there's so much. I was telling my coworker today. She's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I." And this is, it's funny and it's not funny. And Lily and I talked about this the other day. Um, I can't, I have been, I can't lie. I have been, I have stepped my toe in to music here and there. I've done some little things. Um, but I, I right now, I don't have my, I don't have the heart for playing uh, as I did. And I'm hoping, and uh, I'm just going to kind of work on that. That's a, a temporary feeling based on a temporary situation and, you know, everything, there's a season and a passing, but I don't, for me right now, find comfort and in playing my guitar like I have in the past. So I've been knitting. I knit this. <laughs> I like that. Whatever that and is, I, I like those colors. That's pretty cool. That's right there. This. I knit this. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I used it. This. What is that? A hat? I, okay, well, this is an embarrassing thing. Oh, why, <laughs> why are we talking about my knitting? Oh, this is the other thing. So I started to make my husband a vest. I'm not a clothes maker, though I'm trying to. So I started making my husband a vest. So this is the bottom of the vest. That's nice. Well, so what happened was, as I was going around and around, my husband, and you guys both know my husband, he, this is for like Tom Arnold. Like he, my husband. <laughs> <is> <laughs> Like the base of it is so wide, it's like gigantic. And then, so I was like, I got to get rid of this thing. So I thought it I would make like a scarf. Well, so I don't know. So then I was trying to make it like a like a cow. Like if this hole, if I had made it so tight, and I am going to undo it. If I undo this a little bit and loosen it, this could be a nice scruncher under a better, denim jacket. You pray you for know, cold, honey, because that's. Scruncher thing. Yeah. Anyway, wow. cold, cold so I pants. knit and I and I eat, That's but I always did that before. Yeah, so. yes. a lot of knitting. Oh my goodness, Lily, um, you've been writing. 
I've been writing. Um, I knit too, not as well as Catherine. No. But I, I had one day where I said, I can't do any more music. I can't do any more recording. I'm going to go insane. So I took out all my knitting and then that overwhelmed me and I put it all back in and I watched TV. Um, this for me has been in life, I think the most difficult time I've ever been in. Yeah. And like all of us, we all have challenges, things that happen in life. I only knew of a pandemic from history, from reading. This thing has affected me very deeply. I lost seven friends to COVID. No. And in and it was one after the other, after the other, after the other. Um, and I was crying a lot and I was very upset. Um, I also hate, and I said this in an interview that I did recently, and I'll say it now. You know, social media has its place, blah, 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 blah. I hate when I open social media and I see that a friend has gone, has passed. That's no way to find out. I get hysterical. And I just about found out about everyone that passed that way. And I know it's the easiest way to reach everybody and all of that, but I'd prefer a phone call. Just the same, it's not going to make their passing and my feeling about their passing any less. It was very difficult, and it's been very difficult. Uh, it's scary because you're saying, how close is this going to get to me? You don't want it to be your, your immediate family or anyone for that matter. But it's been very, very intense. Um, I'm a high-risk individual having uh, autoimmune disease and asthma. Uh, so I have to be very, very careful. I'm not doing Halloween this year. Don't send me any bad messages or texts or none of that mess. I don't care. I'm taking care of me. Yeah, you have um, to take care and of I you. can't blame these poor little kids. They come tearing up the stairs like you're giving them gold. They want their yeah. candy. Yeah. And we're not doing that. Um, no. yeah. It's 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 been, you know, that and with a lot of the social unrest that's been going on, that's been... Ugh, Captain and I spoke extensively yeah. at length about this the other day and yeah. the bad feelings about it and all the death and murder and but and this is all at the same time as the pandemic so everything is yeah. doubled. Um, my saving grace has been music. I have written a, a little over thirty songs since March. Now I always write all the time and I write a lot, but my was so focused because there was nothing else to do. I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't, what are you going to do? Where are you going to go? So I just wrote and I'm teaching myself garage band, which I want to kill myself when I work on it, but that's, I'm not an engineer. No. Yeah. I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I'm a singer. Yeah. I play guitar, but just the same to record. And so that's, it's like learn by doing and so far so good, but still I'd rather go to a studio and have an engineer and just put me in a booth with my mic and plug yeah. in my guitar and do that. Yeah. I agree. But you um, do what you do best, what you do best. Right. But I'm learning it. I, I, it's frightening for me when I hear other musicians say, well, we got a good another two years of this, get used to it. And I'm like, no, please. Yeah. No, no. But so I'm doing the best I can. And I, I'd actually like to release some of this stuff. I don't know that it's technically as, where I would like for it to be what, you know, you have the, the, the bar high, you put out a great record. You don't want it to be less than that. Musically, I think it'll still be good. So, so I started to do play all the parts on certain songs So me playing drums, me play, doing the whole Prince Jeff Lee Johnson thing. God bless mm -hmm. them. <laughs> and so what I'm doing instead of sending the songs to my bandmates, so the bass player will replace my flunky bass playing. The drummer oh. will replace the drums. Dale will add keyboards and edit and mix the thing. Thank God. Yeah. Mixing is hard. And yes. so we'll see what happens with that. Um, I've been having fun doing it and getting from them. Hey, I came up with this part and they send me a video and, and I hear it. And so that's, that's fun, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. And, yeah. and, but this is, it keeps me going and, you know, that's about it. Um, it's just been a, this has been a really hard, very difficult time for me. Um. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm in I'm I'm in the same place as as Catherine is right now about not being able to feel anything and and, and you know I took the 
the instruments are there and I can see them and I look at them mm -hmm. every day, but I have no desire to pick up and play. I, I want to share this comment. Barbara chimed back in again, Catherine. I stopped playing my piano and composing for 10 years during the worst, one of the worst times in my life. You won't lose it. It's the best thing you can do for you. Absolutely. Well, and, and the, the thing is that yeah. for those of you who know a little bit about my kind of musical story. I've only been in the folk music world now for five years and I'm more than 15. Um, I, you know, sang all through high school, you know, I always was a singer of some kind, um, but I never was a, I was in like a rock band in college, but then, you know, I went, I got married, I went to graduate school, I did more graduate school. So I really didn't pick up a guitar for, 20 years i mean wow. almost never um and then my dad passed away in 2014 and just huge feelings were coming up and i saw my guitar and i said you know i need to sing i need to you know get these feelings out and i started writing which i never had i was always a cover singer so i wrote and wrote and wrote and and, and i did things i never did before and at that time it was playing was a catharsis for me and it was a way to get all those feelings out and you know it is true and i'm sure for all of us you know even you know you see the tears on the on the paper as mm -hmm. you're writing you know i would see them and i said oh you know i'm, I'm tapping and now just now i'm talking the past month would i even kind of get i never i wasn't listening to any music I, because I was kind of, I'm so in my shell and mm -hmm. I'm not, you, if you know me, I'm, I'm not a shelly person. I'm kind of an out there person, but this had me go very, very inside I get and oh, you know, music was opening me and I didn't want to be open. I wanted, I was protecting myself that way. So just recently, am I listening to music and listening to like, there's a, a station on the internet radio station called happy 70s and i'm actually <laughs> listening to happy music and i'm telling you i was not i was like to me it was you know i couldn't do it so i am so i don't care where it is i will be in a field next year i don't care what anybody's and the good news is we're both me and lily are loud so i can you know be in a field with no mic and you can hear me in the next county sometimes so I'll be singing, but uh, it doesn't matter where I will be with my friends. Somehow, I, I will have to. Well, Dina and Catherine, I both want to say that um, that's not going to go away. Who you are, right. your talent. Like I was telling Catherine the other day, I said, whatever you do, don't forego the talent you've been given. Because that's a gift. And some people want it and don't have it. And they ain't getting it. So, you know, uh, there was a one time in my life for, for a year I stopped. I purposely and I was in a, a bad place that I said, I kept thinking if I play music, I'm going to associate these bad feelings with playing music. And I'm not I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to do that. Um, I just want to feel good. Feel It's separate. And the same yeah. way with my sister saying she didn't play for 10 years because she went through that difficult time. And yeah. you should hear her now. Oh, she's gangster sure. she's for an amazing sure. pianist yeah. also an amazing she's co-writes songs with me as well yeah. she's co-written of the 30 songs i've recorded god bless me with my home <laughs> recording wow. equipment five songs and of the five my sister and i co-wrote three oh, so that's and it's fun so even if we couldn't we didn't see each other between march and may i'm <sighs> sorry march and june wow, wow. and uh, but on the phone we'd be on the phone and she, i'd send her uh, the uh, an MP3, or I'd send her lyrics, and she'd write back, and so we wrote like that. And I'd pick up the phone and put it on speaker and say, "Okay, this is what I have," and I, you know, and so and we and so a lot of times we used to write like that before because she was living in New York. She's and now not far. She's, yeah, she's right down the street, right around the corner. Yeah. So I mean, we've had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we we've we, yeah, it's it's I just. And it's always born of conversation. So I already have the music and we have these conversations and all of a sudden I said, remember we were talking about the other day? I wrote about it. What do you think? 
And so one song I like, I wrote, um, it's called Besos, which is Spanish for kisses. Mm -hmm. And I um, was remembering my grandparents. My grandparents would be home doing whatever and calamity and craziness is going on in the house and the radio would be on, the Spanish station would be on. And all, all of a sudden, some old ballad, Spanish bolero would come on and they'd just drop what they were doing, go just wouldn't say a word, go find each other and just dance. Oh. And I'd stare at them. And when the song finished, she went back to over here and he went back in the kitchen. <laughs> and mm. that was it. That's and I was funny. remembering that and that style of music. And so I had all the music. So my sister happened to call. I said, I just wrote this. Want to hear it? Sure. So you know, I play it and she tells me, oh my God, that's beautiful. I said, yeah, I don't have any ideas yet, but I was thinking about grandma and grandpa and I was thinking about this and that. 15 minute, minutes later, she writes me back. She has one verse. And in the time that she wrote her verse, I wrote a verse. Oh. So the song came together really nicely. And, um, and I real... don't think Lily has mentioned yet that that's her twin sister. Oh yes. So yes. that kind of mental connection, Absolutely. maybe not yeah, as that happens. It's not true. as you know more. I mean, because yeah. if I called my brother and said I want to write a song, you're like, click. Go away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it just happened, you sure. know, because she heard the music sure. and she liked it, and she said, "Oh," and she's great because she softens my edges lyrically. I am very direct oh. and straight to the point, and talk about I want you to die. I'm going to stick you with a knife in the center of your chest. Barbara will say, you can't say that. Like on, <laughs> on better days, there was a line that I started to write. I wrote life. I wanted to say life is hell. And she said, Lily, you're going to scare all the people. You can't, you can't. And I said, but that's what I mean. And she goes, okay, we'll say it differently. So we co-wrote the song. And then eventually I wrote the line, life is harder than living. Which And isn't that stronger? And it's poetic. I still think it sucks, but never, you know. Ooh. I think it's, don't think it's hell. No, no, not the line. I think yes. the line's great, but, but the you know, line. But how the what what drove me to it was so intense. And she goes, just step back. And she's yeah. very she's she's wow. very calm that way. She's yeah. very so it's very cool. So I enjoy it a lot. And uh, how beautiful, you know. And and that that kept you know kept us going. And when we finally got to see each other again. It was great. Huh. It was actually on our birthday. So it was in June when they, things opened up a little bit more. She goes, everything's green. Let's go. You know, and we just, uh, she came over and we had burgers. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a weird time. This is a weird time a for weird humanity, time. for life. For, for, I, you know, I, there's things, there's. Uh, well, it's a weird yeah. time for humanity, plain and yeah. simple. You know, I, I'm at a point where I'm. I really just don't want to leave my house and I hardly leave my house. You know, yeah, I'm with you, Dina. You know, mm -hmm. I, I have to go to, I have to go to the bake shop to work with, with Gail a couple of days a week. I, you know, we're in the kitchen we we've got customers on the weekend. It's all it's almost zero contact. I hand them their food through mm -hmm. a, through a sliding window. You know, they've called and ordered. Um, and I don't, I don't, I'm very happy that I get to close that window. Mm. At least there's a screen and then we can chat. But then I also know that in 10 minutes, somebody else is coming to pick up their order. Mm -hmm. So I get to like, done, we're done. Conversation's over, got to go. And and many people are, they, it's just literally grab and go. They mm -hmm. take it, they say, thank you. Thanks for doing this. And they, and they mm -hmm. hightail it back out of, down the street to their car, whatever. Um, and other than that, I have some real serious anxiety of my own leaving the house yeah. and having to go inside anywhere. I don't go inside anywhere, Dina. I'm telling yeah. you, my I'm very fortunate that before this happened, I've been a permanent telecommuter in my day job. Already, I had been working from home for two years. Mm -hmm. So at a job I've had for a very long time. So I didn't ever go into work. You know, I worked from my kitchen or from my office up here. And uh, then when my husband, you know, my husband was working in, you know, near Wall, near, not in Wall Street, but in that Wall Street area of New York. So I was very fortunate that he didn't, you know, right away in early March, they said, you know, everyone's just going to work from home, uh, which he still is. But um, so I have my groceries delivered. 
I, I've just started, like, we'll take walks in the early morning. And I live in a big kind of suburban neighborhood. So, you know, we have lots of room, but seeing people kind of freaks me out. I'm, and, and then on the other hand, my brother works at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. He manages a grocery store department. So he's there every day with, you know, a hundred people. And his wife is a doctor who, you know, has to help people who are sick. So I stay really far away from them. Like, yeah. Um, but, uh, but also to see, you know, he wears his, he wears his mask. She's wearing her masks. And, um, you know, they see people every day in with social distance and, and all that sort of stuff. So I know that you can live and go out and be out with people every day and be okay. But for me, I'm just, again, it's, I'm just yeah. like a little hermit and it's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, uh, it's hard. Well, I, I, you know, it's more of the, less of the risk of where I need to go is there's a less of a risk of getting sick from someone as there is the interactions, which mm. are, there's a meanness that I'm, that I'm experiencing mm. in, in certain areas. And I don't want to mm. encounter that. I just want to be yeah. kind, you know, I just want right. to, you know, I, I just, I just want to be able to smile and say, please yeah. go ahead, you know, go in front of me or, or whatever. But I don't want to tell people, go in front of me or I walk out in the street when someone's coming the other way in the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. There's an unspoken, um, un, 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 unsocial, unsociable, unsociable. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. And, uh, I, I, that's something I hope that we'll be able to carefully recover from. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. but you, there's also self-preservation. I mean, I've yeah. done it. I had mm -hmm. to go walking down the street and I saw yeah. two people talking without masks. Yes. I went and walked in the middle of the street till I got mm -hmm. exactly. as far away as I could. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're not wearing masks. Yes. I don't know. Do they live in the same house? And they're standing right. outside. I don't know. Right. Um, that's, that's a huge concern. Absolutely. And, yeah. But it's like, you know, Absolutely. I'm not going to say, hey, where's your mask? <laughs> no, um, but when I go into, when I had to go, we were working on a project and I had to go into uh, a major hardware store, a big box hardware store, and there are people in there without masks on. Yeah. Yep. It's very hard for me I get that. to not address that. And in fact, yeah. there was a day I was standing looking, I needed a paintbrush. I needed a paintbrush to finish something. I'm looking at the paintbrushes. And there was a young man, college age, two of them standing behind me. One had the mask on, the other one had it below his nose. Mm. And had they just kept moving, I would have, I would have let it go but they were standing behind me over my shoulder and I turned and said can you please put that over your nose where it's supposed to be mm -hmm. I could not not say that and right. thankfully it was met with I'm so sorry okay sure right but I don't always expect that to be the case now. right and it's not always the case definitely yeah oh my goodness I can't so, wait for this year to be over. Well, it's not just the year. So do we so like I said, you know, it's hard for us to plan anything, but do you do you have do you have high hopes? Do you have, you know, you got that looking out for better days? What's what do you think? Can I have dates already in twenty twenty one. I hope they stand. Yeah. That's all. I'm looking forward to, to playing. And also yeah. at the same time I'm terrified. Mm -hmm. We haven't played since February. It's like yeah. I mean, everybody's home practicing and everything, but still, it's not the same thing. And and but I think we so much want to do it. I think it's going to be an explosion and magic. Yeah. I also would like to record new music, and I just I also miss my friends. My bandmates are my mm. friends. That's We've done right. some Zoom mm -hmm. thingies, and I always those days I am my happiest afterwards. I feel good because I'm connected yeah. to people that I I care about. Um, and you realize how much that's missing in your life. And that's the interesting thing about being a performing musician is that those people are some of your closest friends, yep. at least in your heart they are, you know, and and the, you really, really miss that connection. And that, that connection among people who play music together is something that not everyone understands. Oh, and I also yeah. miss, you know, audiences and yeah. going to a gig and setting up and, and you know, I you think in the next time. So, do you sell CDs? Do you sign autographs? You know, do you when they want to talk to you? How close do you let them? 
you know, mm-hmm. do you do that or do you just go home? You know, after you're done. But I mean, cross that bridge when we get there. I think more people and more places are being careful, but it's up to the individuals. And as singers, the three of us, yeah. that's because we take in a big breath. We yeah. put out a big breath. Yeah. All three of us. <laughs> we have to be <laughs> got to be careful with drop yeah. what's in the air. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We're and it, I, I we're love also getting it. You know. Yes. Exactly. We're getting it. So you don't yes. know what's floating in the air where you yeah. are. You're definitely sucking it so in. So you have to be much mm-hmm. as I want to do it. And I, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, we just until until the new world order for us comes together uh, with this and, and we heal from it. Mm-hmm. And people yeah, are done smart. Some, uh, I've done some, I've done some performing over the summer in some different ways. So um, I was a participant in this year's virtual Philadelphia Folk Festival. So that was done. I have to say it was, they engaged a, a production company that it was very cool what they did. And I wasn't sure what they were going to do. They basically asked us to provide videos. And I did work in a socially distant way um, with a wonderful musician friend of mine, Jim Fogarty, who taped me and, and then he played and kind of put it all together. And then we submitted that to the Philly folk people. And what they had done was taken and made into frames the different stages of the philadelphia folk festival because they there's you know they're year there year after year so there's a front porch stage which is in the campground there's the main stage and what they did is they basically inset your video into the stage so you had the stage around you so that was a a virtual summer festival that was kind of crazy and fun Um, I was scheduled to be in Chicago, the Chicago area, for several gigs this summer, including Woodstock, Illinois, the Woodstock Folk Festival. So I wish I could play Woodstock. And what they were kind enough to do, they took the entire, and it's been going on for many years now, they took the entire festival, the entire lineup, and just booked us all for 2021. And that's an outdoor festival where I feel very comfortable. Um with folks doing the right things that for me as an artist, I feel okay with that. Um, I also just had a show technically this month, cause it's still September today um, at the heritage conservancy in Doylestown. They had a, a once a month outdoor show in the evening. And it was what they decided to do as a virtual show um, that was only open to an audience um, people who were members of the conservancy and they limited to about 30 people. So it was outdoors. People were very far away from each other, like very far. I could barely, you know, I'm like, you're out there. Um, So I do have some things booked for 2021 at this point. And I was saying to Lily, I want any kind of music that I am doing, any kind of work that I'm doing to be all about joy and goodness. So I'm, I'm not going to, be, I'm known as a very hard worker and, you know, I'm trying to get bookings. I'm trying to do my things. I'm just going to let things flow and I'm just going to do what feels right for me and hope, you know, that as everything goes through, I, I have a very strong feeling that the minute I'm out there and, and even from 10 feet away can see my friends, even from 10 feet away, that that will fill you know, that will really fill my heart in a way that will make me want to sing a million times more than I ever did before. I mean, that's what I'm hoping uh, will happen. It will. Yeah, absolutely. Well, ladies, we've been having such a wonderful conversation. Um, uh, I am absolutely looking forward to the time when I can see both of you again. As I know you are. Likewise. Yeah. We've uh, pretty much come to the end of our our time here tonight. Um, there's always so much to to, to want to sort of tag on at the end, but uh, I just uh, 
just got to keep searching for some inspiration. I think that's that's the thing I'm looking for. And and I think one of the things that catches me is Lily that you have Barbara for some really cool inspiration for you. Um, Catherine, you have, you know, whatever it is it, that that seventies happy music. If that's what takes you to, you know, the next place, and that's good. I, you know, was taking. I place. know a place. Come there on, let's go. go. <laughs> Ain't nobody crying. I'll take you there. I'll that's take it. you there. Amen. I did, yes. Amen. I, you know, I started. I started taking drum lessons let two years ago, and Ooh. and you know, but I, oh, so you! That's, I've heard your drumming is excellent. That's the only thing I'm able to do right now, and that's my inspiration. Well, that's okay. Is to go upstairs you're on it. and just well, yeah, I'm just, but I'm, I'm just trying to stay tuned in and hear it from another another place, you know. So maybe the beats will be the thing. I mean, we all we all interpret this. And are handling this however yeah there's no right or wrong nope. just you know yeah. and check-ins you know i had a phone call today from from a bandmate drummer producer who's guess you know i started making my list okay mm. it may take two years to record something but i got my list started today no that's good yeah okay. i mean that that's talking? important and people still don't do it even in this pandemic people don't call this yeah. is like I was talking about the whole social media thing and mm -hmm. the texting and all that. So the whole lot of hooey. Pick up yeah. the phone. Something happens mm -hmm. when you hear yeah. somebody's voice. When the other night, when I, Catherine and I stayed there on the phone forever, and I said, "This feels so good. Yeah. I felt so good." You need it's, it's human it's connection. Yeah. 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 So, so there we go. And um, this, this is what we got for now. It was wonderful to talk to both of you. Likewise. And to see you Thank as you, well. Dina. Right? And Thank so you, Dina. Thank you, Lily. Thanks, Cat. Thanks, D. Ah, so the thing I got it. Oh, the thing we got to do before we say goodbye is and, and click out is to try to give a high five. Now I got it easy because I can go up, oh, but it's still not easy. Uh, so you got you can get Lily get each other. I'm trying and I'm I can't. I can't be in your frame this way to you. See how hard oh, this I got is. It. Wow. And now you two have to see. It's really you just got to go backwards. I have a I have a cost. problem with there you go you got it geometry <laughs> whatever <laughs> just make sure all five fingers are showing all right five I have five, five. I don't know if they all show there give it go. a wave I have all a right. big hand love you ladies all right all right thanks bye -bye. everybody thank you Tina. thank you Lily yeah. thank you be well yep bye all right folks good to see everyone tonight um not a whole lot to tell coming up. I'm still working on booking some uh, some folks to come on and be a guest. So uh, the only thing I do want to remind you all is, as I've said before, 10% of any tips donated to this program go to Turning Point of Lehigh Valley. I have gone so far as to set up a monthly uh, payment comes right out, of my, right out of my bank account. So if you would like to help contribute to that, uh, paypal.me forward slash Hall 2020 And again, 10% of anything that comes in goes to turning point of the Lehigh Valley, which is a service, an agency provides service and resources for folks who are victims of domestic abuse. And we all need a little bit extra help with that right now. Thanks so much. And um, I'll see you next time.